Hello, I'm Bob Plankers. I'm a staff technical marketing architect at VMware Corporation, and it is my pleasure to show off the Virtual Trusted Platform Module, or VTPM, that is now part of VMware Cloud on AWS. There's no better way to show it off than Windows 11, installing Windows 11. When Microsoft released Windows 11, they started requiring TPMs wherever Windows 11 is installed. And so that's become a, a big point of interest for many of our customers. So let's walk through the installation. We'll go from the beginning all the way to the end and show how we can do it in VMware Cloud on AWS and that it works great. So to start with here, I'm logged into the VMware Cloud console itself and the uh, I've opened up a software defined data center, SDDC, that has been deployed. It just has one host uh, right now for testing purposes. Uh, it's deployed as an i3EN instance, which has CPU types that are supported by Microsoft. Other instance types may or may not be supported. You should make your own decisions about that based on uh, what you're doing and the instance types you're interested in. So looking at this, I've already set up a network segment for workloads. I've also already set up a content library with the Windows 11 ISO image, the installer image there. And so we can do that. We can, we'll go over to the vSphere side of the SDDC, we'll log into vCenter server that's deployed as part of this. And why don't we just go ahead and create a new virtual machine. We will give it the unique name of Windows 11. We'll add it to the cluster, just like you would expect. When you're adding a new VM or configuring things in a VMware Cloud on AWS SDDC, you'll see two vSAN instances. One is for the management side of things. One is for workloads. And so we'll pick the workloads. Compatibility. By default, it's hardware version 14. We're going to bump that up to hardware version 19, the latest. If you're building new templates, uh, you might as well use the latest and latest and greatest version of the virtual hardware. There's performance improvements. There's new hardware functionality in here as well, such as the VTPM. So we'll go ahead and click Next. Windows is what we want, but we don't want Windows Server 2019. We're actually going to install it as Windows 10. Windows 11 will be part of the list in the near future, but Windows 10 is what we're doing right now, so it works fine. We'll have to make a couple of small adjustments to it, which we'll do in just a second here. So to start with, Windows 11 requires, instead of 48 gigs of disk, it requires 52, so we'll bump that up. You'll want to make your own decisions about how big you want the disk to be. Uh, it's got a workload segment for networks. Like I said, we've already got a content library configured, so I will pick that as the, as the right option here. And I will actually say that I'd like to connect it at power on. So we don't have a TPM yet. We'll go in here and add a trusted platform module. Boom. There we go. I also want to go into VM options and make sure a few things are set for boot options, EFI, a requirement for secure boot, which uh, and Windows 11 requires both secure boot and EFI. Good ideas moving forward. I'm actually going to bump this this number up here so that we've got a chance to catch it in the console without having to reset it all the time. From here we can go ahead and click finish. It will provision it and then we can turn it on. VMware Tools is not installed. That's expected. Here, press any key to boot from CD or DVD. Maybe. Oops, I missed it. Here, we'll try again. There we go. Seems like a familiar installation. I'm using the web console for this. The web console works really well and is proxied through vCenter server itself. So it, the permissions are easy. Hey, look at this. This looks very familiar. It's a little bit more purple than other Windows installers that I've seen. But uh, we'll go ahead and click Next and Install Now. That would be the point. Uh, there are some ways to bypass the CPU and TPM checks, disk space checks, that sort of thing. Uh, you can look those up on your own, but that would, would have been the point at, uh, where you would have edited the registry, set some registry flags in the installer if you wanted to do that. Windows 11 Enterprise, I'm going to go ahead and pick that. I'm going to agree to the licensing terms. I'll pick Custom here 
because there's nothing on this already, just to, so that we can see the way it's configured. It looks pretty standard, and it's not giving us any errors about that. Now, some of the boring parts, it'll copy files across. It's copying from the vSAN data store, uh, that ISO that's located in on the vSAN data store in the content library. So this should go pretty quickly. While we're waiting, the virtual TPM, it's not just a Windows 11 thing. Uh, it can be used on any guest operating systems, we, uh, Linux or Windows. And uh, if you, yeah, enables Microsoft Device Guard, Device Guard and Credential Guard, the virtualization based security features can use uh, trusted platform modules to help keep their secrets. So that helps. If you're subject to regulatory compliance requirements, then uh, you, you might have a requirement to use and enable TPMs. This will help you meet those as well for Windows Server 2022 or 2019, 2016, 2012. Hey, look at that. It is done. We'll let it restart. One of the things we'll do after this, the operating system is installed, we'll go back and we'll also convert the PV SCSI, the network adapters from E1000 to VMXNet and the SCSI adapter from LSI Logic to PV, PV SCSI. We'll show, show you how to do that. It's basically the same as it's always been but we definitely recommend doing that sort of work in order to, well, you get about 40% more performance out of the para-virtualized devices. And so that's nothing to laugh at. You know, we, we want all the performance we, uh, we can get in our environments in most cases. And so we'll go ahead and do that. I like, like that it's getting ready now. This looks very familiar. There have been no errors. Mm -hmm. Very straightforward. Here we go. Well, that was extremely boring, and boring is good in my opinion. Infrastructure could stand to be as boring as possible. It's nice to have new features and functionality, of course, but the uh, uh, no excitement there. The uh, uh, so it's good to see that it's working, and we'll pick. I'm in the United States, so I'll go ahead and pick that wherever you are. I hope you're doing well. Because it does have network functionality here, I've configured it with a network. Uh, it will go go ahead and check out on the network. I'll pick the keyboard that I want. Checking for updates. Yep, here it goes. It's got a working network connection, so it's going to check for updates as part of the installation. 
it'll also prompt us for some things that we might not want to do but you can make your own choices depending on how you're deploying choosing to deploy this So I don't want to sign in with my Microsoft account. I'm going to go into sign in options and I'm going to pick domain join instead. And then it'll prompt me to create a local user account. I'm just going to call this one user. And I'm going to give it my super secret password. In fact, I will do it twice because it asks nicely. Security questions. So security questions are always a trap. Name of the city where I was born is a matter of public record. Pretty much any attacker can get to I uh, can figure that one out, so I will just enter a random string here. Uh, the name of my oldest cousin looks like... That is a very strange name for my oldest cousin. And we'll pick one more. The first school I attended, probably also a matter of public record, so we don't want to put anything in there that could be guessed. These are true of all security questions everywhere, by the way. You can choose your own privacy settings. On your own, I'm just going to accept these out of an effort to speed this along. So, Windows going through the last of its configuration here. It's, as it says, getting things ready for us. We appreciate that. I will attempt to keep my cloud plugged in. I appreciate the advice. Almost there. Excellent. Hey, look at that. We have a working Windows 11 instance. Let's go into the settings. Down in system here. We'll check it out. Make sure that it's not complaining about anything. Device specifications. Yep, that looks familiar. That is the i3EN CPU type. 4 gigs of RAM. Windows 11 Enterprise, all is good. One of the things I want to do now here is I want to install the VMware tools. So we go into Guest OS, install VMware tools. We will mount that as, as a CD-ROM or DVD-ROM. Oh, here we go. Autoplay sees it. Most organizations will eventually shut autoplay off, but uh, in this case, we'll use it to go ahead and install this. This is something we actually do want. Go ahead and install this. I'll install it as just typical. There are some different choices that you can make. It's worth exploring there. But uh, I'm really just after the new graphics drivers and the new network and PV SCSI drivers. finish that. Prompt to restart. Yes, please. Once it restarts, what we'll do is we will add the easiest way to convert the devices is to add new ones alongside the old ones that have the, the device types that we want to switch to. Windows will install the drivers for it. 
and then we can go back and clean up the old stuff as well I'll show I'll demo that in its entirety here so we'll log in my super secret password okay so we'll go ahead here why don't I open Windows device manager and we can see here like storage controllers for example we just have an LSI adapter so why don't we go in here and edit we can do this while it's live we'll add a new device SCSI controller and the new SCSI controller we would like to, the type to be para virtual we'll add a new network adapter and that new, oh, that's the existing one, the new one, I'm actually going to not connect it. I'll set it to VMXNet3. We'll say OK. Oh, the window closed because the graphics driver is loaded. Part of the VMware tools gets you resizable windows like this, and so that's helpful. Hey, look at that. It picked up that, and we'll check the network adapters. It's got the VMXNet network adapter as well. So at this point, we'll shut this down. For it to show powered off what we'll do is we'll go into edit settings again we'll remove the new device and we'll switch the old SCSI device to para virtual and what we'll do is we'll remove both of the network devices here and we'll add a new one that's connected and of the correct type so that it, it shows up as network one, network adapter one. At this time, I will also remove the CD-ROM. We don't, we don't need that. And we can remove the SATA controller, which was for the CD-ROM. Reconfigured. We'll make this VM lean and mean. Now we'll boot it again. And then we'll clean up the guest operating system a little bit, and you should be good to go. I appreciate appreciate you watching this. Hope it's not too boring, but hope hopefully it's informative and proof that this stuff works. You know, it's not just that we say it works, but that it actually does work in real life. So one of the things that I like doing, I'll go back to Device Manager now that the system is booted. I'd like to check to make sure that it's got the right. So it's got PV SCSI and that it's got the right network adapter. Yep, it does. But it says it's adapter number two, which makes sense. This is the second VMX net that we've added. I want to go and show hidden devices, though. And what I like doing is I like removing and uninstalling the device, the old devices. And actually, with network adapters, I like uninstalling both of them so that the, the next time it detects it, and we'll redetect it in just a second here, the next time it detects it, it sees it as just the first network adapter. All right, so now we can go action, scan for hardware changes. We've got a VMX net kernel adapter, Ethernet adapter rather, and PV SCSI, but we only have one of them, and all is good. At this point, you can shut it down and go through the rest of the process to make it a template or do whatever you're up to. So. I really appreciate you. Hopefully you uh, found some value in this. Please leave a comment or uh, send us feedback if you find something that's wrong or confusing or have a question or you like what you see. Please subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much and take care.